So, hello, Lydia. Nice to speak with you today. Hello. Hello, Chris. How hello. are you? I'm very well, thank you. And do you want to just introduce yourself, tell us where you're from, and tell us a little bit about your art? Yes, of course. It's a pleasure to uh, participate on Art Apocalypse. I'm very happy with this project. Uh, I'm sure that it's going to be amazing. I'm a, an artist from Portugal. I'm a painter, I'm a sculptor, and I compose music. I, in the past, I make some vocals, uh, but uh, right now I'm in standby <laughs> because I'm very busy painting. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to, to give this interview and talk to you, and I'm very happy. <laughs> it's fantastic. And you've got some news for us, haven't you? So I'm going to cut across to uh, the image that you've given us. Mm -hmm. And you've got you heard some fantastic news yesterday. So yes, do you want it to... was a nice surprise. Uh, it's my first uh, art trophy. I'm very happy with this. He calls the La Palma de, de Loro um, by the Gallery Art Expo, and um, uh, the event was cancelled. But they shipped me the art trophy. So yesterday I come to the post and I said, Oh, what? I have an art trophy. <laughs> Great, oh. amazing. Oh. I was not expecting and I'm happy with this. So uh, just sharing the good news. <laughs> that fantastic news. And you would yeah. have, so it's obviously the gallery is shut, but they have awarded. And are they doing that as an online exhibition as well? Um, the, the art trophy, it, it was win with a painting that calls the Magic Blue. It's a horse painting. Uh, he's not here at the moment. He's in New York wow. with uh, a friend of mine. She stayed with him, <laughs> but I never think that this painting were were the winner. <laughs> wow. But I'm very happy with it. That's great, and it's the steady horses. <laughs> uh, and it's fantastic for the Artocalypse to have an award-winning artist. Yes. Playing in our exhibition, that's fantastic for us. So. Thank you so much. And I hope that, and the winning picture, will, will you be able to uh, exhibit it for us in our exhibition? Yes, I'm going to exhibit, um, I'm thinking, uh, you know, artists, uh, art, uh, sometimes we are confused, but uh, I'm preparing something good with horses and some uh, ocean <laughs> waves. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be a surprise, something new. I'm not going to make the, these paintings right beside me, one or two, but I will make uh, purposely for Art Apocalypse wow. some new paintings. And um, I'm uh, working on it right away. <laughs> Fantastic. Because we don't have much time, right, Chris? <laughs> no, we don't have much time left. And no. so it's great for our visitors to know that you're working on that. And uh, we can expect to see that painting revealed Amazing. in two weeks. That would be fantastic. <laughs> so we're also looking at a picture on the uh, left-hand side here of your studio. Yes. So tell us a little bit about your workspace and uh, how it inspires you. And uh, First, uh, I live uh, always uh, near to the ocean, to the beach, that um, gets some influence in the paintings. I, I see many sunsets and... Uh, um, this sun uh, in the water uh, makes some sense in my paintings. Uh, it's very, uh, it's a magical thing that uh, all of us we should uh, share with each other. So I decided to make some seri this year. It calls the seri ocean. Um, yeah. I'm going to yeah. show a little bit. And this is one example. We mm -hmm. have the um, we have the mermaid here. Yes, lovely. As you can see. Yeah. And, and the boat, and the sunset, and the seagulls. The mermaid also is a, mi a mythologic um, character that in uh, here in Portugal is very appreciated because we are uh, pirates of the sea, <laughs> and the, all they can see, yeah. all they say about us. But um, I like very much the the Seri Ocean. But uh, in 2002, I start with the Seri Horses. That's why that uh, I got my first recognizing in 2002, but not like an art trophy like right now. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. So yes, and um, the watercolors were accidentally uh, making 
because I was trying to make something else. Then it starts an idea, like accidentally the water comes in the paper. And I said, wait, let me think. <laughs> Maybe we got something. And always like this. The, the good things becomes like um, uh, for insignificant, insignificant um, things, like like uh, water in the paper. And then the, um, I start to make some moves and then burn the serry horses. And then it's got my, <laughs> my head. Almost uh, 200 watercolors made. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. For example, when you paint, let's say, for example, when you paint your ocean scenes, how do you, are you, do you go down to the ocean and sketch there? Or do you paint there? Or do you paint back in your studio? Or do you start out in nature? No, uh, let me explain something. Uh, one curiosity. All the painters and all the artists have um, a visual memory. We like, uh, uh, we memorize the image very clearly. Normally, a painter or an artist have a past memories very, very, very old, like a childhood, very, very marked, and we can um, reproduce again yeah. years later in front. That's why that uh, when I go to the beach or when I go to some places, there is um, some some points that we memorize completely. It's very, very easy. That uh, facilitates the work of the artist, that it just think and just go to the paper. Normally, I don't use sketches. I do. I start. Yeah, you just start. <laughs> More or less like this. Straight on canvas. Wow. Yes, completely. So you think, so by now you've completed, uh, and is it mostly watercolor or you're now doing oil? Oil, oil color. I use oil color in the painting. Sometimes, uh, uh, I get to the glow art painting. Yeah. Uh, this is a new technique where the, in the blue light LED, the paint is going to start luminous. It's very interesting oh, to the wow. viewer. Yeah. I have some paintings uh, with this kind, like this one behind me. Yes, yeah. <laughs> this lady, yes. as you can see. Uh, she, have a, she looks like a little bit dark, but then when uh, I close all the light and I put the blue light, it's going to be amazing. Like for fluorescent, luminous, it's very interesting. Yes, wow. There is many techniques. Um, there is many ways to make uh, art. <laughs> yeah. Yes, as, as I'm finding out in the Artocalypse, we have many, many ways of, of doing art. So let me ask you, uh, oh, let me go on to here first. Um, so let me ask you, um, Ligia, what do you, um, what inspires you about the Autocalypse? Sorry, you have to repeat your yeah, question. Okay. Let me say again. So let me ask you, Lydia, what is it about the Autocalypse that attracted you? I always like to, um, to make part of a different project. And uh, I think um, the interact with each other. I think this is a great uh, online platform that you created and uh, is going to join a lot of people, a lot of viewers, a lot, a lot of artists, a lot of minds. And this is so interesting in the, um, the world of technology that we are uh, passing through. So I think it's an excellent opportunity and I'm so, so happy to be part of, of this. It's amazing, fantastic. Well, we love having you in the community. <laughs> we love having you in the community. And it's, I agree, it's just to see the creative Completely. energy. The creative energy is fantastic in the community. It's really great. So All, all collaborating with each other and it's amazing. Yeah, Perfect. it's great. Perfect, good. Okay, well, very nice to talk to you today, Ligia. Okay, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Good evening, Kimberly. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too, Chris. Great. Well, why don't you tell us uh, your name, where you're from, and what kind of artist are you? So my name is Kimberly. Uh, I am from New Jersey in the United States, and I am mainly a 
abstract artist, digital artist, poet, um, photographer, and uh, I have a big interest in learning more about creating films and directing films uh, down the road, obviously. Um, but for now, yeah, I have a, a huge library of work and just trying to knock it out and get it out there to the public. An amazing library of work, which we'll dive into just a the teeniest fraction of in a second. But um, but tell me, so tell me first of all, so you mentioned there, I mean, you're pretty much covering uh, a lot of the, the arts, really, especially if you add in filmmaking and video. But just so tell me a little bit about your... Um, your working environment, how you like to, you know, what, how you actually work, your studio, do you, are you outdoors, are you indoors, getting inspiration? How, do, how does that creative process work for you? You know, right now, currently, um, I work, like you can see behind me is uh -huh. literally where I work. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I'm one of these people who just believes when the inspiration comes, it comes and you should follow it. Um, whether you're, outside um, or you're in your very small apartment and just trying to make space to be creative. Um, so that's pretty much what I've done behind me. But previous to that, I spent um, where this big library of work that I just mentioned before came from, it came from about a five and a half year period of my life where I had been struck with about 10 debilitating illnesses all at once. Um, and the main one being, main two being Lyme disease and endometriosis. And I actually advocate for those two things because um, people don't talk about it enough. And it, it literally destroyed my life um, physically, mentally, emotionally. Um, I spent 90% of my time for five years in bed um, and in and out of hospitals and doctor's offices. So, but the gift that God gave me through this, this dreadful suffering experience, um, the light that was in that was um, creating art and writing poetry. Mm. And yeah. it started with, uh, on my 37th birthday, I wrote 37 poems, uh, one for each year of my life. And I was in a pretty dark place, but the poems were really, really light. Um, and when I look back now and I think, geez, this... It, over 30,000 pieces of art I've created and maybe six or 700 poems came literally just from that first day. Um, and to me, it's a big representation of how when we are at our lowest points, um, the things we need come to us and they're like gifts and we have to embrace them even if we don't know in the moment that it's a gift. Um, yeah. And maybe we're just using it as we call it maybe an outlet um, a lot of people call it things like that or a hobby, something like that. And I think that's what I thought it was at the time. Um, but when I see now how how God has brought me through this journey to where I am now and, and to where I'm going, it, it clearly was a lot more than that. Uh, and I'm just very grateful for it. It's, I mean, yeah, and that's a, you know, that's a, a, just, just such a, a tough period to go through. But to have that like the, your body of work is just just incredible. I mean, it's just the sheer amount of it. Um, so let's um, let's have a look then at just a very very tiny number. Let's look at a couple of pieces. Um, so I've been following your work for probably I don't know maybe six months now or so. So so this for me, out of the pieces you sent me to choose, this is what I think of as uh, a classic Kimberley piece of artwork. So that's why I've chosen this to have a look at. So why don't you tell me uh, about this piece? Yeah, I love that you picked this one because um, it almost goes right in line with what we were just talking about, but on a to a next phase where this piece, I, I believe it is kind of classic in that it's abstract, but um, more what I call abstrealism. Um, and it's just a, a word I, I coined. It, it's only popular. No one's using it. Um, it just helps me to understand what the art I'm creating is because I don't really believe anything is truly abstract. Um, and the more I share it with people and get feedback from them, I realize I'm right. Yeah. Um, but this particular piece, if you look at it, um, to the part where there's the, the red um, coming, it looks like it's wrapping around a black figure yeah. that's, walking, that's walking forward. And then behind that figure is kind of like the messes of life, right? Like maybe maybe we could just call it the past or yesterday or um, just even one moment ago, you know? Um, and the red to me represents 
kind of the wind um, pulling you forward. And I, I, I look at that black, even though it's not a, you couldn't say it's a person, it's just a figure. It's really just completely abstract. But when I see it, I see a, a person, maybe myself, walking out of a mess, being brought into a clean space, a new, a new beginning, so to speak, a new fresh thought, um, which I think is very appropriate for this time period that we're in, mm -hmm. because it's very easy to get caught up in the negativity. And, and if you look to the left and all of that almost looks like chaos behind the figure that's walking forward. And to be able to leave that behind and still come into, uh, you see the white is, is what she's walking or he is the figure is walking into just represents a, a spiritual state of mind, being able to leave um, the problems, the troubles to the side behind you, allow yourself space to be forgiven um, because we have a hard time forgiving ourselves, let alone other people um, of our own thoughts, our actions um, things of the past, things we're very critical of about ourselves and about the world. Um, the colors that are in here, I mean, if you look at it, I even use certain textures. It's a digital piece of artwork, by the way. Mm -hmm. And But the, the digital brushes I use also reflect these things. Like the green um, is just almost looks like just little strokes. It, it looks, uh, it's meant to represent trees and nature. Um, and when you look at the blue... And right, almost, almost looks like it over it is kind of representative of like um, sea life, fish, um, any which to me represents chaos. The sea represents when you read poetry and things, and like it typically represents chaos and and confusion. Um, and so all those those elements are in there, and then you see this figure being able to still um, with spiritually come out of that. And I feel like that's what it is like that it almost looks like a foot is taking that next step, like out of that chaos and into a new, a new, fresh new beginning mind, mindset or next future. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that I think is the first. So one of your characteristics, I think, of the way that you. So that's the first time I've ever heard you, um, I think, uh, talk about one of your pieces of work, because your usual mode of engagement uh, on the LinkedIn or is to put your piece up and then ask for everybody else's opinion or interpretation rather of what they see in it. Uh, so we don't usually get to see your interpretation. So you yeah, I've, but that's a big part of it for me. I want, I want that. I don't want to title my pieces. I don't want to put just my perspective on it because I don't believe art is meant for that. I believe art is for, for our heart and soul. That's why we create, but we create for others. It's it's almost like a mirror, um, and it allows us, in my humble opinion, um, it's almost like a gateway um, for not only us but our audience or our viewers mm -hmm. to be able to be free and to discover things maybe about themselves or about the world that they didn't really think about before or that they they themselves can't express. Um, so when I ask people for their feedback, it's because I want them to feel they're a part of the creation as well. It isn't here. I'm, I'm pushing my, my thoughts upon you. I want them to feel um, free to be able to express what this creativity is doing to them. Because when we look at something or we read something or we listen to something, we have this digestion that happens and it comes in through us and it affects, it affects us. And um, I want people to be affected positively, but I want them to be able to be free to express what it is that's happening in their in their daily interactions so that they can better have discernment of their own thoughts and take control of them. Mm. Um, and that's the purpose of why I ask people so much um, to be involved in my process. Yeah. And, and you people get, love it. I mean, uh, yeah, you, know, you get great like, feedback. You get, welcome. You do. Yeah. You, you get a lot of, um, you know, you get a lot, you do get a lot of engagement on that because people, you know, take, when you give people the, um, the space to do that, then they do respond which is yeah which is what, what yeah okay so let's um so that is uh you know you know as i say i would probably call that a classic Clint kimberley piece so this other piece i picked out because uh it, this is i've never seen anything from you before that you that even in this you know that's that's very you know is is in that kind of style of you know it's not abstract at all it's very clear 
what, what you know what the subject is and again a piece of digital art but uh, yeah. but clearly I'm guessing this is perhaps your niece or, or or somebody close family member it is this is my niece and um she is she is the other creative in my family um and there aren't really it's me and her um and that's it everyone else is very they have very structured jobs mm. but um yeah. when I was going through all of that with the sickness um she was like this little light that would always come in and I would see her almost every weekend. Um, she would, my brother would drop her off and just something she, she has this way about her that she's, she's very gentle and she's very kind and she's very generous and she's not critical of other people. And this, what she's holding here is one of her, her teddy bears and she names them. And she has, I mean, I don't know if anyone remembers, but as a child, if, I don't know if I was the only one or only creative people did it or what, but um, like we would have, you'd have like a little teddy bear family and you'd name them and, and this kind of childlike thing, but she's, she's so um, almost motherly towards the way she was very motherly towards this teddy, this little teddy bear that she has. And it, it started as a photograph. Um, and what I generally do with digital art is if it's not a painting and even with my paintings, um, the digital paintings and also my traditional work, I'll take that and put it in a digital format and so that I can manipulate it and try to pull out what it is that I saw, you know, and I feel like this had, a, this did that really well. Um, the particular software I used and the way I manipulated the photo, I feel like you get that feeling of this just young, innocent girl, like, mm -hmm just being very caring and gentle and sweet. And, and it's kind of how she made me feel for, you know, five years, every time I saw her, yeah. um, I did quite a few pieces with her and she's actually in the, the film that collaboration film that is going to be premiering at the art clubs. So you'll get to see her in all of her glory and you'll get, then you'll, it'll, all the pieces will come together, yeah, come together. and you Fantastic. go, oh, I see what you mean about her. She's just like this little, this little ray of light and, um, I love I love creating anything with her. Like when I have yeah. pictures of her, I have a couple paintings I've done of her, and yeah, so that's that's that. Well, yeah, and then she's the next generation of artists to come to come on next, isn't she? So definitely, to absolutely, keep, so, to keep the world turning. So great. Well, that was that was. So we're going to see those pieces um, and some more in your exhibit this weekend. Yes. I oh, don't yeah. know how we're going to contain the thirty thousand pieces of artwork into a small booth, but we will have to. <laughs> no, no, no. We will look Hopefully, we will narrow it down. Hopefully, we've got it narrowed down. Okay. It's all crossed. So tell, so just tell me um, a little bit about what attracted you, the, what attracted you to the auto. Uh, just tell me a little bit about what attracts you to the artocalypse. So yeah, the artocalypse to me is. I think the most important part about it to me is the collaboration, um, the community and the collaboration. I, the idea of people coming together with different skills, different talents, um, often very, very different perspectives, but being able to put a lot of our own personal, um, maybe objectives aside and come together to create something as as a team or as a group, to me is a perfect example of of what life should be and what it is all about. Mm -hmm. um, and when that can happen with the arts, it's incredible. I mean, I think about the collaboration I'm doing right now for this particular exhibit, and it's me and six other people, plus my niece, that's seven people. None of us have the same type of skills or abilities. None of us uh, we're from all over the globe, right? With the exception yeah, yeah. of Danny with by me in New Jersey and my niece, but everybody else who's working on this. So it's an example to me of such complete trust in just the fact that it's going to be done well, because it's not like I can sit next to the, the guy who's editing all the content I gave him or Charlotte can, who did the music can can say, Hey, I know exactly what the film is going to be at the end. So let me create this perfect thing and then get it in. It's like it, it allows, I feel like, a very free spirit to come into the thing, but it makes people trust, and it makes them be in a state of mind of community, and I think we need so much more of that. And with everybody, 
everything closed and shut down all over the place. I, I can't think of a better way um, at this point in time to come together and get just get creative. And the fact that we're bringing the audience in in such a live and interactive way is to me what just brings the, it's like the cherry on top. It brings it over the top because that's what you need without community, without bringing people in. Because we, I believe, as artists create for other people. And one of the best things about it is being able to interact with those people and learn and see how they thought about it, what caused them to create it. Because then that gives you this new perspective. And then your perspective will, maybe you'll comment and talk with one of the artists at the show. And now they'll have a piece of what you got from from what they gave. And it becomes like this full, full circle thing. And it's just incredible. It's just it's, I hope it goes. I hope it continues to go. Yeah, I mean the way the pace it's been building uh, and the people who's in it, I, I can't see it uh, getting anything but bigger and better in the next few weeks. It's yeah. going to be incredible to watch. <laughs> so fantastic. Well, it was great talking to you this afternoon, Kimberly. Uh, we we'll look forward to seeing you at the exhibition, and uh, we'll speak again soon. All right, great. Thank you, Chris. Okay, bye. Bye.